How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine so great a mercy What heart could fathom such boundless grace The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame The cross has spoken, I am forgiven The King of Kings calls me His own Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever Jesus Christ my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ. Then came the morning that sealed the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Then came the morning that sealed the promise Your very body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Good morning, everybody. So glad that you are able to join us this morning on this cloudy day. Trust that God has been good and hope you are all doing well. While well, my family is recovering from tiredness, exhaustion, and a little bit of touch of cold and all of that, 
but God is still good and we are so thankful that you are able to join us. Before we get started, let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Let's bow our heads. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for being with us and enabling us, oh God, to gather together to worship you and praise you and honor you. Father, we pray that you, we will, that, that you will enable us, oh God, to stay committed to you and to stay committed to our calling and help us, Father, to be obedient to your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. So this morning I wanted to talk to you about having breakfast on the beach. You know, uh, many people go camping. Uh, one of my favorite stories about uh, camping, I don't do camping. When, when I'm traveling, if I have to stay at the Holiday Inn, that is going to be my camping. <laughs> that I don't do my, my much of outdoor stuff very well and so uh, you know but, but I do remember my favorite story the parent trap where the kids and the dad and the possibly new wife uh, fiance if you will are going out camping just get to know one another so to speak and so while they are camping the girl who is not um, very where, you know, she's a city girl, she's not used to camping and all, and she doesn't like fish. And uh, so they're having dinner and she's dis uh, disgusted and she says, I'll wait till breakfast, what are we having? And the, uh, the kids and the dad say, fish. I mean, we are camping, we are going to have fish. We catch fish, we eat fish. Whatever we catch, that's what we eat. So we catch fish and we eat fish. That's what I remember when I read this scripture. As I said, our title for today is Breakfast on the Beach. And let's take a look at the Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, verses 4 and 5. John chapter, so actually let's do verses 5 through 6. John chapter 21, verses 5 through 6. And let us read this, these scriptures. He called early in the morning. I'm starting with verse 4. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The, the American Standard Version actually says that he jumped into the water to go to Jesus. Okay, He jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals, there were fish, on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. And Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. I read a little more verses than I had anticipated. I actually read from John chapter 21 verses starting at verse 4 and I came all the way up to verse 12. And the scripture is very interesting because it teaches us about obedience. You know, these are fishermen. We have talked about this particular scripture portion. We have talked about it once once before where we, where, you know, where, where, where we were asking if you were a fisherman, you know, the, the, the disciples job was fishing. They were fishermen and yet they did not catch any fish all night long when they had gone out and Jesus is waiting for them on the shore in the early morning hours. And as they are approaching the seashore, Jesus calls out to them and says, friend, do you have any fish? And they say, no, we haven't caught any. And Jesus says, throw your net on the other side. And, uh, you know, common sense would say the immediate response should be, we already did that and we didn't catch any. The other side's not going to make any difference. But what the unique thing that we see here is that they listened and they obeyed. Even before they knew who he was, they just thought that was a stranger. 
And while he was a stranger, they still obeyed. And because of obedience, they were able to catch 153 fish. I wonder why that number is so unique. I would love to do some study on that, but not for today. Uh, the, you know, but the 153 fish and the, uh, and the Bible tells us that the net, in spite of these large, heavy fish, it did not tear because God gave that fishing for them. God gave those fishes for them and they pulled it in and Jesus was ready and waiting for them with a charcoal fire burning and ready with some fish and some bread. And he asked them to bring the fish that they had caught so that they could all sit together and have breakfast together on the beach. You know, the blessing of God is always amazing. It is always beautiful. It is always beyond measure, beyond what we could ask or think or imagine. And that, that, that's why this story is so very important for us to recognize that not only did the disciples obey because of obedience, they were able to reap the benefits of having breakfast on the beach with Jesus. How marvelous it would be for us if we would learn to trust God and listen to him and obey him when he tells us or asks us to do things rather than questioning and saying, God, would it not have been better? God, are you sure this is what you want? When God calls us to do something, if we would just put our faith and trust in him and obey him and act upon what he has asked us to do, the blessings will abound and it will be a greater blessing that we could share with others what God has done in our lives because of obedience. So today, my friends, I pray that God has encouraged you in some small way to understand the importance of obedience in serving Christ. The disciples were able to enjoy a breakfast session on the beach after the resurrection with Jesus Christ. How much more we could enjoy the presence of God when we obey him and we follow him and when we faithfully follow him. So I pray today that God has blessed you with this message and that we will continue to grow in the Lord and continue to have faith in him and walk closer to him and draw closer to him and remain in him all the days of our lives. God bless you. Let's pray. So our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you God for this day. Thank you God for enabling us, O oh Master, to hear your word, O oh God, that teaches us, O oh God, that it is so much better to obey what you have asked us to do. Father God, as we draw close to you, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will teach us, O oh God, to not hesitate, but to immediately obey when you ask us to do things so that your will will be fulfilled in our lives and that we will be blessed because of it. And because of that blessing, we will be able to bless others. Help us, Father, to always remain in you. God, as our children head back to school and work and their respective duties this coming Monday, God, we pray that you will be with them. Pray for the, those that are sick. We pray for my family who are not well. God, we pray that you will continue to be with them. Help them, O oh Lord, to recover from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. We pray that you will lay your healing hand upon them, touch them, heal them and make them whole. Father God, we pray for your protection around us as we step out to do your work and to take care of the things that we are, we are responsible for this coming week. And we pray, O oh God, that you will remain with us in all things. Through it all, O oh God, we give you praise and we give you thanks. And we praise you, we worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So my friends, thank you all for watching. God be with you. God bless you. I hope you have a blessed week until we meet again. I hope that you will be, remain faithful to God and we will all learn to draw close to him each and every day. God bless you. Bye now.